idea where to go after Konken. I was thinking about going back to Chiang Mai, but that was a 13 hour bus ride, which I really didn't fancy. And Ayutthaya is on the way back to Bangkok, and then I might go off and do all the islands. I just really liked Ayutthaya last time. I'm here for three nights. Tomorrow I'll explore all these sites. I'm gonna get a bicycle from the hostel and do lots of cycling. So I wanna be fresh at it tomorrow. I wanna be up nice and early. <laughs> But I am going to go out and have a beer anyway, because I didn't have a drink at all last night. As with all Thai cities, they have a street food market. We've got some fried chicken, which is not the most adventurous of food, so I admit. But there are one or two places doing curries, but you get them served in plastic bags right, to take home. Mm, that's not really good for me. I once had that before and it's ended up with it everywhere. Well, gone for the usual, the passion fruit smoother. 25 baht, probably the cheapest I've paid. Normally pay between 40 and 50, and it's probably the best one I've had. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are a hell of a lot of street dogs around, which I don't remember from last time. There's literally bloody hundreds of them. Not all friendly as well, according to some uh, guy. Just told me to keep my eye out on one in particular. That's my hostel then, a place called Sleepiness. And to just give you some idea of the uh, location, I literally walk at my hostel and right there is Ayutthaya National Park, historical park. That's not bad, is it? Location-wise, bloody hell. So today is all about visiting the ancient temples of Ayutthaya. Our first stop is Wat Ratchaburana. And this is the temple that was built by the King Boram Ratchaturet II. He built it here on the site where his two brothers were cremated. They died in a power struggle to succeed their father, King Nakon, who died in 1424. From 1350, Ayutthaya was the capital of the Kingdom of Siam. It would trade with all corners of Asia and even Europe. In 1767, it was invaded and burnt to the ground by the Burmese. Rather than rebuild this site, people just built a new town just next to it. And this site's remained here ever since. You can just imagine what it must have been like before it was burnt to the ground. Incredible temples and stupas. You used to be able to go down here. Not anymore. During excavation work they found about 100 kilograms of gold that had been placed here by the kings and wealthy families as offerings to the Buddha. A lot of it was looted, so a policeman was employed to keep watch over this site. But he was corrupt, <laughs> like most policemen are in this country. And uh, yeah, so he basically allowed people to come in and steal a lot of the gold. It's estimated that only approximately one tenth of the gold that was kept inside here has ever been found. This used to be the ordination hall to the west of the main stupa. As we can see here, this will have been a huge Buddha. Probably actually the best view, to be honest, because there's less tourists over here. We're going to be seeing a lot of this today. 
It's a big site. I'm not sure which is bigger, whether this one's bigger or the one in Sukkotai. The one in Sukkotai, you can actually cycle around the uh, historic town. Whereas this one, you have to leave your bike outside and then explore by foot. This is the Wat Mahatat temple. And this is probably the most famous one because somewhere around here is the tree with a Buddha head encased in the tree. And last time I was here, I nearly bloody missed it. Now, I've not managed to spot it yet, but I guess I'm just going to look for the throngs of tourists. As you can see, all around the perimeter of this part, we have what remains of the Buddhas. And they've all been beheaded. There's can't see a single one that still has its head but over here one remains how did this one survive there's literally hundreds that surround this area and they've all been beheaded apart from this one this one looks like it needs a bit of support I don't think it was a case of us nearly missing the Buddha in the tree last time. I just think it's because we didn't see it till right at the end, so we were getting a bit worried that we were going to miss it. But it's right here anyway. So the theory is, is that the head was once part of um, a sandstone Buddha image, which fell off the main body onto the ground, and then because of torrential rain and floods and the trees and plants growing excessively it eventually became trapped into the roots of this constantly growing body tree body tree or bodhi tree i don't know hence providing a utah with tourism and lots of money for years to come I just came over to take this shot because it looked really nice with the reflection and everything and as I walked towards the edge there was a huge splash and I just seen a monitor lizard disappear under this bridge I'm taking a break from the historical city of Ayutthaya to visit an active temple didn't know about this but I've just passed it on the bike and it looks pretty busy so let's go and take a look <laughs> this Buddha used to be in uh, an old temple that was ruined and so they built a new temple around it. I'm not sure if that's the case because all the um, information was in Thai, but it certainly, from the pictures, it certainly seems that way. This is Wat Phra Si Sanfet, I think. Probably saying that wrong. The sites are just so vast. Look at these bloody things. This area used to be the king's palace. And when the king demanded bigger living quarters, then it became a temple, the biggest temple in the city. And these cheddars, which are in the middle, there's three of them and each one contains the ashes of an Ayutthayan king. Look at this beautiful beast. I was just looking uh, nearby, there's this elephant place where you can pay to ride them. And it's uh, pretty cheap, apparently. And 
I've never ridden an elephant before in the same way as I've never kicked a dog some people just don't care do they as long as they get to have the experience right. there are bloody loads of elephants there's about half a dozen coming down the street now you can take the elephants into this old temple that I've just seen this is Wat Praram and apparently in this one there are some ancient paintings of Buddhas and things I don't know where they are or how you get to them this old fella's just decided to come for a walk he ain't had to show a ticket though I don't know if you can see this artwork it says there's the remains of some Buddha art it's probably on the inside you can't get in <laughs> well the art is actually on the prang itself we can see the sculptures we've got the standing Buddha there without a head just above him is a I think that's a reclining Buddha and then various other sculptures above Absolute beautiful creatures. And it's uh, very interesting because here you can pay to feed the elephants. 50 baht to feed the elephants. Now, surely they're being fed anyway. I really want to feed them because I don't think I've ever fed an elephant before and I've bought other elephants but I don't really particularly want to give this place any money I've looked on Google Maps and like of the reviews like the second most uh, common term is animal cruelty I've just cycled to the next temple which is Wat Lakaya Suta and there's not much left of this one to be honest but on the way in there were a few kind of Buddhas hidden away in uh, a few they looked they didn't look like they were old to be honest but who knows with with these things but the highlight of this place I was told was the um, reclining Buddha now I've seen a lot of reclining Buddhas so I was expecting it to be similar to that but it's not this is a bloody old bugger it has been restored it was restored in 1956 but this is not like any of the reclining buddhas i've ever seen are you ready check that out now apparently usually it's um covered in orange cloth but for some reason it's not today you can see the Buddha's toes are all of equal length and this thing kind of surrounds it this wall here or the remains of this which suggests that it was once encased the Buddha's resting his head on the lotus plant the people have left the lotus plant here has offerings to the Buddha what else have we got going on? incense candles on some of the guides it tells you when you come 
to this temple to treat yourself to a mango shake from one of the little stalls at the side. I've gone for pineapple. It's absolutely delicious. We actually have a full Buddha here, which is pretty unusual. And in this building over here, which doesn't look old, does it? It looks fairly new, but apparently... Yep, I can just about make it out through the window at the side. Wow. Just out in the middle of nowhere in this old ruin. There's people being here. Somebody's left their drink and we still have the incense burning. This temple is surrounded by a moat. There's just a little bridge to get in over here. This is just on the entrance to the Wat Lakaya Sutta temple and again we have the Buddhas complete with heads. Now according to the uh, guide that I've been reading online, the temple I've just visited, the Wat Lakoya Sutta, is one of the most important temples in Ayutthaya. But to be honest, it says that about all of them. I've just cycled a bloody miles. I had to cross the bridge out of the old town, cycling in the main streets, going around roundabouts. Yeah, I've got this thing nailed. I've come to this other temple and uh, one of the highlights of this temple is a huge reclining Buddha. And here it is. The sheer scale of it, it's absolutely massive and there are just hundreds of them. These things, these stupas, they, they're like roundabouts in the middle of the centre. There's just hundreds of them all over. Not just in the historical old town, but just scattered everywhere. Well, there's quite a few stairs to climb. I can't actually remember what there is up there when you get there. Only one way to find out. Well, believe it or not, it's filled with Buddhas. You can actually walk around this. Maybe you get good views from the top. You've got to dodge in and out of people taking photos of themselves in front of the thing. The thing's not good enough. You have to be stood in front of the thing. I think that's it for my exploration of the historical city of Ayutthaya. It's a great day out. I highly recommend taking a bicycle because it's just very quick to get from one to the other and it's all flat, there's no hills or anything. You can get a bike from your guest house for 50 baht. Most of the places I've been in cost 50 baht each of the sites, so it's cost me a couple of quid. Incredible sites. And yeah, if you come to Ayutthaya, then you've probably come to do this, but I'm going to leave it there and now I'm going to explore the rest of the city, see what else Ayutthaya has got to offer, if anything. Maybe people come here just for this, who knows? Let's go and find out. Well it's a bloody late start today, Jeffrey and Did I have a good night last night? 
ended up in some house party. No idea whose house it was, didn't know anybody there. And of course I was the last to leave. Yeah, <laughs> absolute cracking night. I really love this city, you know. This, this place is uh, absolutely fantastic. And in today's vlog, you're gonna get a very hung over me, um, having a look around the city. Today we're gonna see uh, if, are you tired? Are you tired? Are you tired? However the hell you say it. What else it's got to offer apart from its historic old town? Maybe it's got nothing to offer. It certainly had a lot to offer last night. Hell? I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to eat today. I'm going to walk off in this direction, which will take me to uh, the local market. So I'm presuming around there there'll be some interesting little treats. What did I have last time I was here? I had fish on a stick. That would do. Fish on a bloody stick. I was kind of under the impression that because Ayutthaya is like literally just two hours away on the train to Bangkok that there'd be hundreds of trains throughout the day. But there are not. There's trains at three o'clock in the morning and then there's one at like three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm gonna get a bus. I've just had a look there and it's like a bus to Bangkok from here costs less than two quid. So I just need to get some change. And tomorrow I'm back to Bangkok. Just behind me is like the kind of market area and I've just stopped at this place. Some red pork with rice, 40 baht, proper Thai street food, which I've kind of missed. Didn't really see much of it in uh, Kon Ken, certainly not like this. It was all in Thai and had some very strange ingredients. Uh, but here we're back to red pork with rice, which is good. 40 baht breakfast, come on. I've come over to an island called Koh Loi which is just to the east of the historical centre of Ayutthaya and I had read somewhere this is one of the things to do in Ayutthaya go over to Koh Loi, the, uh, the blog said and I don't know what this place is there doesn't seem to be anything going on here I, I, I thought it was going to be like a, just a residential and I'd walk around and just see a little bit of uh, local life but it's just nothing There's just nothing going on at all. So I'm not going to stay here too long. What a bizarre place. A random boat there. I'm not sure whether all this is flooded, if it's usual like this. So yeah, cool oi. Skip it. Well, one of the places I visited last time was the Ayataya Millions Toy Museum. And it's still here. And they've got all kinds of things. We've got Totoro stuff over here. We have uh, Moonings. Bartender. <laughs> There's some cracking stuff in here. Dolls are just weird, aren't they? They're just bloody weird. So that children are scared of clowns. Clowns are fine. Dolls. Look at these guys. Scared a kid to death. What a peculiar place. And it's here in Ayutthaya, <laughs> right on the outskirts. I'm glad it survived, I'm glad it's still there after uh, Covid. I mean, I don't know how many visitors it gets, so I guess it can afford to lose money if it only gets three visitors a day. But uh, some great stuff in there. The toys from my generation were just bloody weird as hell, weren't they? There's no wonder people of my generation turned out the way they did. Growing up with, with some of that stuff as uh, toys, scary. One of the things I've been told I must try when I'm in Ayutthaya is roti samai, which is a local kind of uh, delicacy, I suppose. And loads of shops on this street sell them. This is the one that I've been told to come to. And basically, it's like a candy floss wrapped up in a roti. But the candy floss here 
is um, it's chewy. It's different to the stuff you get in England. So I'm going to give it a go. No idea what it is. Hey, uh, roti samai, samai, uh, the meat 50, five zero, just one. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Oh, they must sell a lot because they're all ready. Thank you. Crack on cap. All right, so basically you get a bag of these pancakes and this will warm and then you get a bag of this uh, kind of candy hair. So I guess you just wrap them up and make your bowls. Bloody hell, there's, there's tons of them. I thought you'd just get one. <laughs> so it's basically like hair. <laughs> I don't know what ratio of hair to pancake I should be going with, but let's go with that. <laughs> wow. If you need your sugar fix, this is what you need. I'm gonna wash it down with some blue fanta. I'd stay here longer to be honest. I really enjoyed that entire this time. I enjoyed it last time, but I really enjoyed it this time. I had a great time. If you're doing the usual route of Bangkok to Chiang Mai, stop off in uh, old Ayutthaya. Have a couple of days here.